Hi, the 4.5, the matched case control studies, an example. And okay, so this example the, is the X-rays and acute the myeloid the leukemia. So this investigates the relationship between the occurrence of disease and some other variables, including demographic and the X-ray variables. So this data has the structure of the case control study. So, so subgroups are here indicated by this ID. And in each subgroup, we only have the one case. Actually, some, some subgroups have the sample size of three. So we have the 112 the subgroups and the, we have the 238 observations. So disease is Y and the other variables are just the candidates for X. And the, at first we have have to remove the one variable that is the Down syndrome, because the, when Down syndrome is present, then the disease is always one. So the Down syndrome um, individuals have the 100 pro probability to have this disease in this data set. And this makes the coefficient for Down syndrome infinitely large because the, um, basically the, um, in the likelihood function that we have the expectation of the alpha plus the beta times X for the case. So maybe X is zero, I would say. And here the denominator is exponential of alpha plus beta X I, I is the ice observation in the JS group. So in this case, if always the case has the probability of disease equal to one, then the coefficient for disease becomes infinitely large the to maximize likelihood. So the estimation becomes, actually estimation that diverges. So we have to remove this variable first. So a kind of the condition. So at first the Down syndrome is present, then disease status is always one. And otherwise that we develop a prediction model to see that when the disease occurs. So, um, yeah, and the, yeah, it's possible that they just, we drop this variable, but uh, um, here that we just exclude that this, um, observations with the Down syndrome equals to yes. And also that we would like to exclude the um, all observation within the, these subgroups because this is the case control studies. So when we drop the sum variable, uh, sorry, the, when we drop the sum observation, then we would like to drop the observation within the same group. Otherwise uh, we cannot uh, keep the case control, the study design. So the R, AML, the X-ray, this is the group, if excluding the Down syndrome patients and the um, patients within the same group. So now that we can set, um, fit the model and that we use the library, the survival, because the, this model is developed um, in the survival analysis. So that's why that it's in the survival package. Then that we use the C logit function, um, C um, maybe case control, the, the initial of case control, the C logit function, and that we fit the disease on all other variables. And in the textbook example that it, um, it uses the all variables, but the, um, since there are many variables the, just the for space, the saving that we only use, I only use the F ray, that this is one type of X ray and the CN ray, another type of X ray, only two variables I included uh, because actually the other variables are all insignificant. So it, actually that we have to fit the full model first and we have to drop those variables by, you know, try and error. And uh, 
Okay, so the different, the situation, the different from logistic regression is this term. So straighter is equal to ID. The straighter is basically the subgroups and the ID is the indicator for the subgroup. So since that we construct the likelihood function for each subgroup that we have to specify that information in the, well, otherwise R cannot recognize how to you know, make subgroups. So this is the important part. Then data. Then summary gives here. Summary is, summary is given here. So um, yeah, so basically we have the two factors. The F ray is actually the binary, the predictor. So the F ray is either no or yes. So no is the baseline. So that this F ray is equal to yes, have actually the higher probability of malignant the disease case. And the second factor, CN ray, the CN ray has actually the four levels, the one, two, three, four, I would say, but this is ordered. So one is smaller than two, two is smaller than three, three is smaller than four. So if ordered the variable, the good strategy is that, okay, so at first we just deal with this variable as a just numeric variable. But since this is not numeric, that we consider the quadratic, quadratic term and the cubic term the 2C if the relationship between disease and this variable is more complicated than just linear term or quadratic terms. So just the transformed um, variable. So if, if CN ray is a factor variable that we just, the R just add the factor variable for each level. But if this is ordered variable, R makes this as linear term and a quadratic term and a cubic term. And R did some transformation so that the, these variables are not too similar. For example, often y is equal to x square and y is equal to x to the fourth power. So these are very similar function for typical range of x. So to avoid that, the, um, probably the R did some transformation, but the, basically L is the linear term and this is quadratic and this is cubic term. Yeah, and since the um, model is a kind of exponential model, so log of P is equal to alpha plus beta um, X. So um, the sum exponential of the coefficient is also listed. So P is exponential of alpha plus the beta transpose X. So then we have some, some more information. And also that you can see the Z value. So this is the coefficient divided by the estimated standard deviation. Um, so this is maximum likelihood. So the standard error can be estimated by the Fisher information. So we can get Z values and also that we can get the P values. And you can see the only the first one, the F ray variable and the linear term of CN ray variable are significant and probably the other two are not significant. Then um, you can now the drop the quadratic term and the cubic term of this the CN ray function. So unclass makes this function as just one, two, three, four. Then we only use the this term. We don't include the more complicated term such as the quadratic or cubic term. So we now only have the two variables, two predictors in the model and the estimated coefficients are both the highly, uh, actually the CN ray is highly significant and F ray has the P value of 0 0.051. So we would say that it's marginally significant or maybe marginally insignificant. Yeah. And some other statistics are reported. For example, the concordance. The concordance means that the um, our prediction is 
our predicted probabilities are in correct order. For example, if we have one observation who is the case and the two observations the, for the control. And if probabilities are, for example, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, and 0 0.5, then 0 0.6 8 is larger than 0 0.6 and the 0 0.8 is also larger than 0 0.5. So the two, the comparison are, you know, right direction. So in this case, the concordance is one. But if, for example, that this is 0 0.9, and if we compare this, actually that this is actually the um, not good. So the uh, actually the actually the case has lower probability than the control. So this is discordance. But this is concordance. So this is fine. So this makes concordance equal to the 0.5. So the average of concordance um, is reported here. So this means uh, the roughly speaking, the 65%, the model is correct. The model is correct, 65%. And some tests. Um, so these tests have the two degrees of freedom. So that means the two additional parameters. So the null hypothesis is the null model, model with only intercept. And the alternative is our model with two parameters. And the, this follows the chi-square distribution. So the, this likelihood ratio that follows chi-square distribution with DF2. So it, we can see that this model is better than nothing, at least. Yeah, because these are significant, so that's natural. And uh, two other tests, world test and the score test. So the world test is the based on the normality assumption of the parameters. And the, basically, um, we use the, this information. Um, we use the, this coefficient information and the standard error information and also the covariance between these two parameters and the overall that we can test. For one observation, you can you know, simply divide the, this quantity by this and that we can make a normal approximation. But the, here, the, for the entire model, so we use the, this the two-dimensional vector and the, we do the sum, the z-test. And the score test, um, it, it's also another version of the test by the normal approximation. So usually the likelihood ratio test has more information. So I think that we, we can see this the, um, in principle, but the, um, yeah, you know, everything is approximation. So um, it's worthwhile to mention the multiple tests. So slightly different results, but basically we test the same thing. Yeah, so yeah, much case control studies, the model is different from logistic regression. So one observation is one subgroup. So in likelihood function. So the, if you fit the usual logistic regression, that is not consistent with the sampling scheme. So if you fit the GLM as usual with the binomial, the um, option, then the result is different. Actually, the model is entirely different. So it's hard to see the, how different the, these are. But OK, so actually, results are not too different from the previous one. So F ray, yes, and the unclass. So we have two observations. And F ray is equal to yes. And also, the larger value of the CN ray increase the um, malignancy. And the p values are 0 0.11 and 0 0.0007. Second one is almost the same as the previous one. And this, the first one was 0 0.051 or something, but the, at least it's a kind of uh, marginal, the case. So still the results are somewhat similar and it's really hard to, to compare because model specifications are totally different. But the, this is not appropriate for the case control studies. <laughs> 